This time on Screencast a week, we look at 11 advanced features of your Mac hidden behind a single mysterious key on the keyboard, the Option key. Hello, Internet people. This is another Screencast a week. I'm Kevin Yank, and today we're looking at 11 superpowers that your Option key on your Mac will give you. That's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Let's start at the Apple menu here. First of all, the About This Mac menu item becomes System Information, which saves you a few clicks to get straight to the hardware information about your Mac with a single menu item, accessible only if you hold down the Option key. The other thing that changes when you hold down the Option key down here is the Restart, Shutdown, and Logout menu items lose their ellipses, these three little dots. Those dots indicate that you'll be prompted for more information or for confirmation when you select this menu item. So for example, if I, if I choose shut down, I'm prompted to see if I'm sure I want to shut down. If I'm sure going in, I can just hold down the option key and choose that menu item and my system will shut straight down right away. Moving over to the right here, we have several menu items related to the settings of our system. For example, my Bluetooth menu item here becomes a bit more advanced if I hold down the Option key and open it. I get hardware information about the Bluetooth chip on my system, and each of the devices that I'm paired with now has a Remove menu item. So if you've just paired with your friend's phone for the afternoon to get internet from them, and you no longer want that device paired with your system, you can use the Remove menu item right here in the Bluetooth menu if you hold down the Option key when opening it. Similarly, the Wi-Fi menu gives a lot more detailed technical information about the Wi-Fi network that you're connected to. Things like the type of network, 802.11n here, the exact channel that that network's on, your IP address, and so on. So if you're a network nerd, the Wi-Fi menu gets a whole lot more interesting if you hold down the Option key. The Power menu item gets one extra menu option when you open it with the option key, and that is the condition of the battery in this Mac. So if you have a friend whose Mac is not holding its charge as it should, you can quickly check on the condition of their battery by holding down the option key and clicking the power menu item in the menu bar here. My favorite advanced menu is not on the menu bar by default, so I'm going to go into System Preferences and open Sound and choose Show Volume in Menu Bar. Now the sound menu item normally is a really boring volume slider that you can control with the volume keys on your keyboard anyway. That's why it's not there by default. But hold down the option key and you get instant access to all of the audio devices connected to your system. You can switch from one input device to another if you've got an external microphone connected, or you can change which speakers audio is being sent to on your Mac. And if you've got some AirPlay devices on your network, like an Apple TV or a speaker system that supports AirPlay, you can send your system's audio straight to it by holding down the option key when you click this sound menu item. I really love that personally. Last but not least, we have the Notification Center over here on the right. I don't know if it happens to you, but it happens to me a lot that I'll be showing off something on my system, maybe in a meeting or a presentation, and a notification will pop up in the top right of my Mac here. I'll dismiss it and make my apologies, but obviously I want to keep that from happening again, and I can do that by turning on Do Not Disturb mode by going into Notifications, scrolling up, and toggling this on. But as I do that, I'm showing off all of the other notifications that I haven't dealt with on my system. A much cleaner way to turn on Do Not Disturb, you guessed it, hold down the Option key and click Notification Center and instantly it turns on Do Not Disturb, as you can see by it turning gray. Now for my next trick, I'm going to need a bunch of Safari windows that I have prepared here. Now you're probably used to resizing windows by grabbing the corner with your mouse and dragging it around. Well, here's a nifty one. Hold down the Option key and it will resize the window from the center. So if you're happy with the position and you just want to change the size, you can do that by holding down the Option key. Honestly, I've never found much use for that, but it's cool to show off. On a more practical front, if we go to the buttons at the top here, if you've got a lot of windows cluttering your screen and you want to minimize them all, well, you could click the yellow button here for each window, or you could hold down the Option key and click it once, and all of the windows for that application will be minimized at once. You can also bring them all back at once by holding down the Option key, clicking the window in the dock, and all of the windows for that application will be restored. You can do the same thing with the close button. If you hold down the option key, it'll close all of the windows for that application. 
These tricks don't just work with these buttons either. On the window menu, you can change the minimize option to minimize all by holding down the option key. And you can see it works for the keyboard shortcut as well. Command M to minimize a window becomes option Command M to minimize all windows. Likewise, close window with Command W, you can add option to it and it becomes close all windows. So whether you use the buttons, the menus, or your keyboard to minimize and close windows, you can do them in bulk using the option key. Coming down to the dock, it's got a few tricks to do with the option key. If you right click on an application, you'll get the menu for that application. And if you hold down the option key, the quit item becomes force quit. So if the app is misbehaving and it won't quit normally, you can force quit it just by holding down the option key using the dock menu. The finder is always running, so you'll see it doesn't have a quit item, but if it's misbehaving, you can hold down the option key and then right click on the icon and you get a relaunch menu item that will relaunch the finder and hopefully clear whatever might be going wrong with it. The other thing you can do in the dock with the option key is when you switch applications, you might want to get rid of the clutter that you've left behind. So in this case, if I switch to iTunes, it leaves all of the Safari windows that I was working with before in the background, and that can be a distracting clutter. Instead, with Safari open, just option click the iTunes icon and it hides the Safari application before it switches to iTunes. Similarly, I can click on the current application with the option key held down and it will hide that current application and show you what's behind it. It's a nice easy way to get to a clean desktop. Speaking of the desktop, let's look at the Finder. This one's a bit of a nerdy tip, but here on the Go menu, you have a list of useful folders on your Mac. And if you hold down the option key, an extra one appears, the library folder. This folder is hidden by default on your system. It's where all of the applications you install keep their internal data files where they store things like your preferences and settings. Often as a troubleshooting step, the author of an application will ask you to come in here into preferences and delete the preferences file for the application to reset it to factory defaults. And you can only do that if you can get into your library folder. And you do that by holding down the option key on the Go menu here. If I open my desktop folder instead, you can see I have three folders on my desktop. And if I open folder one, you can see it has a subfolder. Now, if I was really interested in something inside that subfolder, I'd need an extra click to get into it. But instead, when I opened folder one, I could just hold the option key and click that disclosure triangle, and it opens all subfolders all the way down. So you can quickly get to something buried deep down in a nested folder using that option key to open the parent folder. If you come to OS X from Windows, you might be used to cut, copy, and paste in relation to files. So let's say I wanted to move this file into folder 3. I'd right-click on it, choose Copy a File, right-click on folder 3, and choose Paste Item. Now that file's in there, but I've only copied it. What if I wanted to move it? I'm going to undo that change. Now if I was on Windows, if I right-clicked on this, I would be looking for the Cut menu item, but that doesn't exist on Mac. Instead, you copy the file, right-click on the destination folder, and then instead of choosing paste item, hold down the option key and that becomes move item here. Select that and the file is moved instead of copied, just like you're used to on Windows. I got one more tip for you because I couldn't leave it at 10. Often I will select multiple folders and want to know how much space they're using up on my Mac. I might right click on them and choose Get Info. And immediately I can see I've made a mistake because I get a separate info window for each file. I've done this in a folder with 200 subfolders. And let me tell you, that's a lot of windows to clean up. Well, first of all, we know we can close all these windows at once with Option Command W just like that. And then to achieve what I was going for, I should right click on this folder and instead of choosing Get Info, you guessed it, hold down Option and choose Show Inspector instead. The Inspector is a single floating window that updates live as I select items in Finder. You can see it gives me 
information about each folder as I select it here. And if I select all three, it gives me the total size of all three of them combined, which is what I was looking for. So the inspector, a really useful feature of Finder that you'd never know about if you never tried the option key. And I guess that's my message for this video as a whole. Have a play with the option key. In any app that you use frequently, try exploring the menu items with option turned on and off. You'll see various menu items change and disappear. And in general, the option key is there to hide complicated and risky menu items from beginners. But if you've got an app that you use a lot, it's usually worth knowing about those more advanced features. So have a play with the option key and see what you can find. That's it for Screencast a Week this week. As usual, you can visit patreon.com slash screencast a week to find all the old episodes and to find out how to support the show and get every episode a week early. Until next week, I'm Kevin Yank. Thanks for watching.